Welcome to another weekly vlog. And it's been a few days since I vlogged or did anything. So I have a few reading updates for you guys. So I have read over half of Elizabeth by J. Rennie Terrelli. This is our May June pick for the Fierce Women book club. I decided to listen to it on audiobook and it's really nice. It's very, very entertaining. I'm not sure if it's too entertaining to be a really good biography, but I'm just going to keep on listening to it and see what I think. It is about Elizabeth Taylor's life and we very chronologically follow her life from childhood as she was a child star in movies, parents, and later, of course, all her marriages. I think we're still stuck at Richard Burton right now, but I know there's more to come and I know there are some new marriages still to be found in these pages. I think the writing is pretty detached. As far as getting to know Elizabeth goes, it's a little bit difficult because we're really looking at her from a big distance while the other, I want to say characters, because it feels not like a biography, it feels like a novel. While the other people in her life are drawn very close and it feels like the author really cares a lot about the other people in her life and less about her. It's, it's a bit strange, but it's incredibly entertaining. I've been listening to it, I think, for the last two weeks while cooking. And it's really put me in a non-fiction mood. So that's great. And then another book I started reading is Troy by Stephen Fry, which was one of my picks for my June TBR. I'm also trying to start my June TBR this week because today is the 3rd of June. And I've read quite a bit from my June TBR because I've read a little over 100 pages of Troy by Stephen Fry. This is the third book in, I think it's going to be a quartet of Greek myth retellings written by Stephen Fry. I've read Mythos, which is more about the general Greek myth and about the introductions, the names, 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 so many names. And then you have Heroes, which is about the mortal beings within the mythology. I listened to that one on audiobook and I think I definitely like Mythos better, even though Heroes gets a lot into the the nitty gritty things about certain people and you get to know a lot of detail and I think he took more liberty with storytelling and I feel like this is a little bit more like mythos because Troy of course it's a gigantic story so many things happen we get to know so many people and I've already feel like I'm finding my favorite characters within these stories because there is one boy named Paris I'm I think his name is pronounced Paris and he has been prophesied to ruin Troy. So when he is born, his parents decide that he must be killed and you kind of get the Snow White storyline a little bit because of course the person that is told to kill him can bring himself to do it and he raises him himself. And we are now at the point when Paris is back in Troy. I feel like 
These are not spoilers because it's myth. <laughs> what I really enjoy about Stephen Fry is he takes you along, he tells you the story himself. And Greek myth is so complicated, it's so complex, it's so wonderful and rich and his Stephen Fry's writing is just absolutely amazing. And he talks to the reader as well. There was this one sentence that it often cracks me up. He said things like, if you're still with me at this point, I'm in awe of you. I thought it was so funny. And he said something else. Of course he didn't annotate it. Of course, why would I do that if I want to vlog about it? If I can just look for it while the camera is on and the battery is flashing. He said something, I know, stay with me. And I just... Stephen Fry. Absolutely love his writing. That's the kind of book that on the one hand I feel like just sitting with all evening and reading, but it's not something I can read big chunks at a time from. So this is probably going to take me a little bit and I do think I'm going to pick another book from my June TBR. Probably either a Bernardine Evaristo's Emperor's Babe or Audrey Lord's Poetry. Just something to switch it up a little bit. It is hot. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot and I do not like it. I am a anti-summer person. <laughs> I love the winter, I love the fall. The spring is okay for me but now we are approaching summer and I really don't like it. I'm not being a summer grinch because the heat really does have an effect on my health and on my body and it's, I feel like I need to hide in the shade, I need to hide inside to be able to survive. A boy did really nicely gave our garden a little makeover a few weeks ago but we now have a very lovely patio and that makes it a bit more bearable. <laughs> Yesterday evening we went over to my parents house, we brought some takeout and they have a place where you can swim but it's not like a pool, a real pool so you can swim in it all year round especially when it gets way hotter in the summer it's not really nice to swim in anymore but yesterday was quite fun. My dad is like the toughest of us all because he always goes in even in the winter which we call him absolutely crazy but he does it anyway. A boy doesn't really like to... Um, my brother sometimes. My mom is just a really good partner to my dad because she usually goes in as well. And yesterday evening I thought okay I'm hot, I don't like the summer, uh, let's just get into the water and I wasn't super brave. I did go in, I didn't really swim. It was more like a quick dive. My shoulders were wet so I counted it. <laughs> I counted it as my first swim of the year. There are two things I do kind of like about summer. The outfits. I really like wearing floaty dresses and the swimming. Molly is just being incredibly cute beneath my tripod. I almost stepped on her accidentally. Well, Molly absolutely adores the summer. She's always in the sun. Max doesn't like it but Molly is very chilly always. She's very cold. In the winter she always cuddles up with us and in the summer she absolutely adores the summer. I'm getting my first vaccination on Tuesday, so I don't really know because today is today is Thursday. So I don't really know how I'm going to do this vlog because I'm expecting to get pretty heavy side effects because I always do with these kind of things. I mean, I got a migraine from trying a new thyroid medication. So I will probably round up this vlog on Monday. So it will be a little bit of a shorter one, but maybe I can tell you a little bit more about Troy. <music>
Hi, it's Friday and if you've watched my latest vlog you know that I absolutely love the film The Guernsey Literary Society or The Guernsey and Potato Peel Pie. No. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Did I get it right? I think so. After watching the film, I think for the fifth time last week for the Dark Academics book club, I got myself the book. It's so pretty. It is also way smaller than I thought. I found it was quite a chunky book, but it's not. I absolutely love the colorful, the happy and the sunny cover. I think it is a book written in letters. The war is over. Juliet Ashton is grappling with writer's block when she receives a letter from Dauncey Adams of Guernsey, a total stranger living halfway across the channel, who has come across her name written in a second-hand book. Juliet begins writing to Dauncey, and in time to everyone in an extraordinary Guernsey literary and potato peel pie society. The society tells Juliet about life on the island, and the dark years spent under the shadow of German occupation. But I think someone told me that it's written in letters, which I don't really have anything against. Dear Sydney, Sydney is the publisher. Yes, I, yes, it's all in letters. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. It's it's historical fiction. It was not written in the 40s, right? Was it? No, it was written in 2008. So it's historical fiction. It's going on my historical fiction shelf. So my dad and I went to get some fruits and vegetables and I got some really nice fresh things. I got some watermelon and I got some avocados and limes so I can make some guacamole. I do not have any nacho chips, so I don't know how I'm going to eat a guacamole, but I saw the very shiny and beautiful lemons and I just thought of guacamole. So uh, maybe at some point this week, I'm going to make guacamole. It's Sunday and I've almost finished Elizabeth by J. Rennie Terabrelli. I think I have one hour left only with the audiobook. I think still the entertainment value is really high of this one. But I'm not really sure how I feel about it. It doesn't feel very objective. And later in the book we get to know a lot about the charity work that Elizabeth did. It focuses very much on the more exciting parts of her life. We get to know a lot about her problems with addiction. And we get to know some things about her children but we have now read about a 20 year period in her life where her children are not discussed once and that feels very strange entertainment value is high but this is going to be a difficult book to review because we always do book reviews for the first time book club and I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this book because was it pleasant to read? Yes, it was pleasant to read. It's a five star read. Did I think it had a high value as a biography? I don't think so. But then again, I have not read enough biographies to really know. So this is going to be a difficult one. And I've also read more of Troy. I am now on page. 242. It is a bit of a slower read than I expected it to be. We have now gotten to the part of the Trojan War where all the fighting is happening. We have now the more tragic part that plays a very big role in the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. We've also read the part that is all about the silence of the girls from Briseis. Her perspective is really detailed in a certain period of time of the Trojan War where Achilles abducts Perseus, who lives in Troy, who is, I think she's a princess. The Greek queen Helen is kidnapped by the Trojans. Yes, that happens in here as well. Trapped in a Greek soldier's camp is another captured queen, Perseus. And Perseus is kidnapped and enslaved by Achilles. And the song of Achilles is about Achilles growing up with his friend Patroclus. And it is about him being taught by a teacher and about a very weird and difficult relationship with his mother. Those stories also happen in here, but I think what Stephen Fry does so well is that he accepts the entire story and he wants to tell a little bit of everything. So where we get a little bit of what Beth Parker and Mella Miller make an entire story of. I think Stephen Fry is really good at minimalizing those stories, taking the most important bits of those stories and putting them in here. Because of course Stephen Fry leaves a lot out, otherwise you cannot tell this entire story in a book of 350 pages. But I like all the little connections I can make and I also like that there are a lot of stories that I didn't know yet. Of course in the second part more of the famous events of the Trojan War 
happens. So I think I did like the first half of the book more with all the background stories of the characters who play a big part in the Trojan War. I think it's so funny because I did not grow up learning a lot about Greek myth, not at all. All I knew about the Trojan War was of course Achilles. I knew his name and I knew about the big wooden horse. But I think in school they taught us way more about uh, northern mythology. I knew way more about Thor and all those kind of mythological beings. So I really enjoy that Stephen Fry has taught me so much. He takes freedom in his narration, but he doesn't take a lot of freedom with his sources. Stephen Fry takes the original story of the Greek myth and makes them incredibly approachable for every reader and just we need to applaud him for doing all that hard work for us because I can only imagine what hard work these books must be. So I'm going to finish this. I don't know, I feel a bit migrainey so I might just do nothing but read today and tomorrow and I'll give you a little update of my final thoughts of Troy probably tomorrow evening. Also something fun I was watching um, Emma from Emmy, her wrap up on the TV and she was talking a lot about War and Peace and how it's a book that everyone should read at some point and apparently Boy was really impressed by your wrap up because he told me that he had ordered a book for me. I said okay well I'm going to guess which book you ordered for me and I asked him for one hint and he said it's a book you're a little bit intimidated by. So I said oh that's War and Peace because that was the only book I could imagine him knowing that I was intimidated by and he looked at me well, how on earth is your first guess the right one? And he ordered me the cloth bound edition of War and Peace. I mean, that man, honestly, he gets the most beautiful edition of that book. And I'm so very grateful. I don't know when it will arrive, but if it will arrive before this vlog goes up, I'll, um, I'll show you the beautiful book. <laughs> It's the next day, it is Monday and somehow today it's not even 3 o'clock and I finished 3 books today so that's very exciting. The first book I finished I don't think I've even talked to you about yet, it is the first book in the Starfell series. It's a magical middle grade which I love and this is, the first one is called Starfell, Willow, Moss and the Lost Day. Willow Moss is a young girl who lives I think in some kind of magical forest, but there's a lot of prejudice against magical people. Especially magical people who have more than one ability. Most magical people have one magical ability and Willow Moss, her ability is seen as the least prestigious from her entire family. Because Willow Moss can find things that are lost, which honestly sounds like an amazing magical ability to me because I am chaotic, I am messy. My keys are always everywhere. But then one day, we miss a Tuesday. No one can remember a certain Tuesday and because Willow has the ability to find lost things, she is asked to find the lost day. Um, I think this middle grade is quite young. I gave it three stars because I don't really feel it's really meant for an adult audience, which of course makes sense 100%. It's not written for me. I think some middle grades really work when you're an adult. This one worked a little bit less but I think children will absolutely adore and love it. And if you need a five hour audiobook pick me up then yes I would recommend this. It reminded me a little bit of The Girl Who Drank the Moon but this one is a little bit more simplistic, a little bit younger but I think if you love that book then you should give this one a go as well. I also finished this one and I gave this one three stars. Definitely not my favorite kind of biography. I think I need to prepare to write the book review of this one and that will go up early in July. And then I finished my main read for this week which was Troy by Stephen Fry and I gave it five stars because I think Stephen Fry does everything perfectly. There is not too little, not too much in the book. He knows exactly what events to leave out 
what to put in. I think for us far, if you could have chosen how to write this book and how to integrate the stories into the book, Stephen Fry did an absolutely perfect job. So that's why I gave it five stars. I don't think it's the kind of book you should read in a few days, which I did do. I think it's a better book to just have on your nightstand and pick up now and then. Even though the story was very captivating, a lot of things happened. So I think it does demand a certain brain power to understand all the different storylines, all the different characters. What I absolutely loved was the last little bit where Stephen Fry just talks about consequences of war on a city, which of course was very catastrophic for Troy. He also talks about just what it means for people and he gets it out of context of the Trojan War as well. We know how the Red Army, for example, raped, looted and murdered their way into Berlin in 1945. How cruelly British troops tortured and mutilated rebels, rounded up after the Indian mutiny, what the American army did in my lie in Vietnam. Whatever country we are from, and however proud we may be of our national claims to tolerance, honor and decency, we cannot dare to assume that armies fighting under our flag have not been guilty of atrocities quite as obscene as those portrayed by the ravaging Greeks that night. Because he used that sentence before he talked about what happened in the last day of the existence of Troy. <laughs> That's, I think, why it felt quite real and quite hard-hitting. I felt Stephen Fry just did the ending perfectly and it really hit my heart. Maybe also because I was listening to music at the same time, which sometimes feels like my reading experience is more emotional when I'm list also listening to beautiful music. Of all the three books, this one is now my new favorite and I believe he is writing or is going to write a fourth book as well which I'm very excited for and I will definitely read the fourth book as well. I had a hard time deciding what books I wanted to pick out for my June TBR because I have quite a lot of short reads in there. But I've seen people read a lot of big Victorian novels and I'm really in the mood for it, which hasn't happened in quite a long time. I got sticky notes, I got a pencil, I got a marker. I need more sticky notes, definitely ones that I can write on as well. If you've seen my June TBR, you know which book I'm going to pick up. I'm going to pick up Middle March. I'm really excited for it. I've got a lot of exciting uh, responses on my June TBR that people really love Middle March and that they are very excited for me to read it. I bought this edition especially to write in and to annotate in because this edition only cost me like 10 euros. So I feel okay doing that. I have a much bigger, more prettier edition of Middle March, which will be the book on my shelves. And this will just be the book that I will make just my own with my annotations and everything. I have high expectations for this book and I feel like this could be one of my favorites in the way that people describe it, in a way that people say why they love it. Possibly next week's vlog or the vlog after that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a vlog next week. It will be a middle March vlog or like the half or a third of middle March. If you've read middle March, let me know your star rating after reading it because I'm very curious to see how you felt about middle March because I know it is very mixed for a lot of different people. So thank you so much for watching another weekly vlog. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and I hope to see you in another video. Doei!